So, hello everyone, um, welcome, uh, I'm Giga, uh, and I will be presenting end-to-end uh, -end testing of Angular applications with Protractor. So, what's on our agenda? Uh, first, we will, first, we will really briefly cover uh, what end-to-end -end testing is uh, and different, different testing frameworks. Then we will talk about Protractor. Uh, and also some complementary tools you could use alongside with end-to-end -end testing. Then we will show you how we use it here at Zamanta, and then I will just uh, present a little demo. So, what's end-to-end -end testing? Uh, by definition, it's a methodology so uh, to test whether the flow of an application is performing as designed from start to finish. So, you want to ensure that the right information is passed between different systems. But basically how we understand end-to-end -end testing is that we want to test how our system responds to different user actions. Why do we want, why do we want to do that? So we want to ensure that our continuous development doesn't break. So uh, how do real-world applications look like? Um, so this is a JavaScript meetup, so I will... Uh, <laughs> We, we have a front-end somewhere and uh, it's connected to a back-end which, uh, which can consist of really different systems so uh, those systems are connected somehow with each other or via HTTP or some queues then you have data points connected to the databases and then you have unit tests which cover each of those systems then you have integration tests which test the commun communication between systems and also you have end-to-end -end tests, or should have end-to-end -end tests, or something like that, which should cover everything. So, do end-to-end -to -end tests really cover everything? Um, sadly, the answer is usually not. Uh, it might be too complex. We might even connect to some third-party services we, which we cannot test. We might uh, be connected to a paid service, so um, we have to fake we have to simplify, we have to divide and conquer. Um, now let's make a really brief overview of different testing frameworks, uh, just to be clear where Protector really fits in. And uh, there are also two definitions. Um, I would like to show you some one is TDD, you probably know about TDD. So this is test-driven development. Basically means that you do an action and you expect a value from that action, so that's what you test. And there's also a behavior-driven development, BDD, uh, which for a given context, when an event happens, then this is the expected action. A bit differently, but um, almost, almost the same. Uh, we have some, so let's take a look about uh, 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 of client-side test runners. You probably know about Jasmine, QUnit, maybe Mocha.js, and uh, maybe even Cucumber, which is a BDD uh, framework. Then you have unit test test runners. So Karma, which is also built by uh, Angular team, uh, Intern, maybe Buster.js, probably even more. Um, and then you have end-to-end -end testing. So most of them are based on the Selenium web driver. This is probably also the most known one. Uh, you have also Night's Watch, JS, and Pro Projector. Okay. You could also do distributed testing or continuous integration. You have test swarm or a fork that's hosted fork, a browser swarm. Uh, Selenium team also presented Selenium Grid. So this is basically Jenkins for JavaScript. There are also some other additional uh, tools you could use with tests. One of them is Synon. Uh, you have spice, stubs, and mocks, and also one is YOLPO, which is just visualizing JavaScript execution. So what is Protractor? Protractor is an end-to-end -end test framework for AngularJS applications, and it's built on top of Selenium. What's Selenium? Selenium is basically browser automation. This doesn't mean just testing. This uh, can also be used for different automating different boring tasks you would have to do with your front end. So, Projector runs tests against your application running in a real browser. Uh, it supports Angular JS specific interaction. Uh, it has automatic waiting for the digest cycle to finish. Uh, it automatically handles promises. Uh, I will show that later. It has a nice debugging console. Uh, 
enables screenshots and has, has a custom browser support with custom browser options or even phantom JS. So the supported client-side frameworks with Protractor are Jasmine, Mocha.js and uh, Cucumber and supported browsers are all the major browsers, even mobile browsers and PhantomJS, but um, usually you want to test in a real browser, so PhantomJS is something you use if you really can't avoid it, right? So let's take a look uh, at the example configuration. You need to specify where your tests are, so the file, that's the specs, the scenarios. You have to specify the browsers. You can specify many different browsers, but here we just use Chrome only. Uh, you specify a base URL, a framework, also framework options, and the, I think most important part is the onPrepare configuration or function, which prepares your applications for the test to run. This can be authentication or many other, other tests that need to be done before you can start your tests. So how does Protractor look like with Jasmine? Um, you describe a module. Then you state which actions need to happen before each test, so that's before each, or in a more TDD notation, that's setup. You can specify what actions need to happen after each test, so after each, or in TDD, teardown. And then you have the test, so here's an example that it should have a state after entering input. So, we find the element, we click on it, we... Uh, check if an element named state is present. It's not, so we send some uh, keys into an input, we do an action, and then check if the state is present. So this is really a basic example. Uh, we, could all, we can also do some uh, interaction or communication with the browser. So we can tell the browser to wait until an element is present. So this is not really the browser, this is the framework. We can tell the projector to wait until an element is present and then run the test. Um, but usually you really don't have to do it because if there's something going on in the background, it's if you have an Angular application, it's in the digest cycle. And projector understands the digest cycle and it waits for it. So it waits for all the actions in the background to complete and then tests for the value. So usually uh, usually your tests look like the example above, just stating the actions sequentially and not worrying about the underlying uh, background jobs or logic and uh, even not worrying about promises. So, for example, the get text example uh, in the bottom, it's, it really returns a promise and Projector automatically handles that promise and tests the value of the promise when it's available. Okay, so yeah, I already started talking about Angular. Again, Protractor waits for the digest cycle to finish. Um, you can disable that if you set ignore synchronization to true. A use case is probably when you are authenticating your system and the authentication is done outside your Angular app. So you don't want the synchronization there. And there's also some useful Angular locators like element by model, element by binding, element by repeater, and so on. Okay, we have a really nice debugging console. We just put a browser pause somewhere in the tests and uh, the browser will wait, will stop its execution and present an interactive mode. There we can state the next command which has to uh, be done. So this is just like a jump in the debugger. Or we can enter the real interactive map interactive mode where we can find elements on the site where we can do custom actions and everything. Also, if you are using the node debugger, it's available with browser debugger. Okay, so um, issues and constraints, of course. So sometimes it's really hard to set up. Error reporting when setting up, it's usually not really useful. Um, Timeouts also do happen and they are not always straightforward to debug because timeouts can come from different sources. It can come from your protractor, it can come from the Selenium driver uh, underneath, it can come from the Jasmine 
framework, it can come even from your Angular application. So those are quite straight and quite hard to debug sometimes. Um, also, Protector doesn't support Angular's timeout. Uh, if you really need it, you use slips or waits in the tests, but uh, usually you can avoid using timeout with interval. But that, of course, that depends. Also, the browser pause and the uh, debugger uh, interactive mode are still better. So, when you pause it and then continue, you can't be sure that all the tests will really pass, even if they passed uh, before. But yeah, that's for debugging purposes, so it's not really a big issue. Okay, um, now we'll take a short look about uh, around the complementary tools which you can use alongside with end-to-end -end testing, and then I will present how we use it here at Samantha. So you probably know about provide delegate in Angular applications. If you're not, it's Quite a useful feature if you need to mock, if you need to mock a service in your end-to-end -end pipeline. So you can decide to do it on the back end, but uh, if you decide to do it on the front end, you can do it with Angular's own configuration. So by uh, delegating a service, this can be one of your services. This can even be a protractor service. You can mock each method you want with some custom code. Okay. So, end-to-end uh, -end tests are great, right? <laughs> but how do we really know if our production app works? Um, one of the possible solutions here could be Pingdom, which is basically a web monitoring service. Um, so you have uptime monitoring, real user monitoring, incident management, API to connect to your own monitoring. But the cool, the cool thing here are transaction tests. So let's cover them. So transaction tests are, it basically runs a transaction on the specified URL and you get feedback if the transaction fails. So here you can see a really basic example of a transaction which authenticates on your production app uh, and checks if some elements are present. It even can wait for an element to be present. We are talking about Angular, so nothing is rendered. Uh, <laughs> Um, really fast, so <laughs> sorry, I had to tell it. <laughs> um, so, what you do here is we go to an URL, we fill in two fields, we submit the form, we test if our Angular app exists, we wait for a container for some data exists, we specify that an element should exist and also another element and then we just check the URL if it's really what we wanted. So those are really nice, but yeah. Um, so it, as I said, it tests the production app, which is nice. The language, the transaction language is small, but it's quite expressive. And a really cool feature is that the selectors you use, those are CSS, CSS selectors are auto-completed. So uh, when you type the transaction test, it auto-completes your, uh, uh, your classes or IDs or something like that. But there are limitations, of course. There are a maximum of 25 transaction commands, but you can stack them. Um, there's also a limited support for complex JavaScript events. Um, key down, key up are not supported, so basically just triggers click. Uh, the element selection is also limited and uh, it cannot run custom JavaScript code. So, what's our use case here at Samantha? Um, we have an AngularJS frontend. It's for our DSP content management platform. And for sales purposes, we needed a demo that it's only valid for one user session. So, Demo's availability is, of course, crucial for the sales pitches to be successful. Um, the demo is directly uh, is a part of the main application. It's not a different code base, it's not on the different server, so it's directly with the whole code base. Uh, it has to be frozen, so we don't, even if we change uh, some production code, we don't want the all of the changes to be always present in the demo. 
uh, and also it has to support all the interactions we do in the normal applications application it has to support it in the demo so how we did that um, as I talked earlier with provide about provide and delegate we delegated our writing API uh, methods to write in a cache instead on the server so every time you needed to obtain any data from the server we, we just check okay if the data is available then it's meant to be seen in the demo but if the data is not present then look in the cache if the user write it, write it something that he needs to see now so um, and this kind of demo really made easy uh, really made end-to-end -end testing easy so we didn't have to worry about breaking anything uh, or complex writing in our whole application pipeline but we just wanted the real data that it's needed for a presentation or for the user to manage our service to be present so yeah the testing pipeline got quite simpler so on the back end of course we have unit and integration tests we have a lot of monitoring of course um, the application front end uh, and it's it has end-to-end -end tests with protractor and it also has unit tests with uh, of services with Karma uh, and the production yeah alongside with the monitoring it also has pingdom transaction monitors so we are notified each time the demo is or could be unavailable of course there are also false positives and yeah we have continuous integration with circle CI uh, how much time do you have left uh, three minutes and a half. three minutes and a half okay so Let's show you the demo. First, I will run the backend server. Okay. And the front end. Okay. So, um, what I will be showing you it's really just a simple music player which downloads uh, music from. YouTube and it plays, so it's something for a Raspberry Pi. Um, and it looks like this, you have a player, you have a history, you have a queue, you add the URLs to the queue. Okay, so here I have the end-to-end -end tests and now I will run them, well, here. So, can you see? Okay, hopefully. Run Protractor. It always installs. I have it uh, set up that way. Uh, all the dependencies if needed. Okay. So now you will see a flashing browser window doing some actions. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. It added. Okay. 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 Oh, and a test failed. Of course, it's a demo. <sighs> Start again. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, two. So this is the reporting. Two expected. We expected Bohemian Rhapsody to be present, and it wasn't. Okay, covering it again. And now it will work. Okay. So, don't do live demos, right? Um, I promised you to. Sh I promised to show you the browser pause feature. So the browser uh, debugger console. We just put a browser pause somewhere in the tests, right? I put it in a, here in the it block. Then I run normally protector, and when it will when it will go to the step where I put in a browser pause, it will just pause all the execution. Huh? <laughs> okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so now we enter the interactive mode. If I put in here C, it will execute the next command. But the cool thing here is ripple. Um, now I can just copy actions. So I wanted to the queue to clear, be clear. It's already clear, but just to be sure, okay, it cleared the queue. Now I want to add a YouTube URL. Okay. No. 
okay, it added. You can see, well, I could choose different font colors. I'm sorry. Um, we added it. Okay, and then now we want to enqueue it. Okay, so this is it, and now we can we can even test it. Some states are present or like getting text. Oh, it also automatically handles promises. So getting text here is a promise and we'll just get the text from the playing site. Okay, so... Uh, ba -ba -ba. <clears throat> if this interested you, uh, we are hiring here at Zamanta, so just go to zamanta.com engineering, <laughs> backend full stack and backend and full stack engineers. But really, thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, just shoot. Some numbers. I, there, of course, it is. It, it can. There are false positives. Yeah. Uh, but if you have a continuous integration and development, the tests will run again, and uh, you will see if, if it's a false positive. But um, it really depends on the test how you how you written it. This was really a demo that I made here quite quickly, and I didn't 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 check everything uh, in the right order. Uh, but I'd say it happens. But if you have a valid continuous integration backend, you, you won't worry about it. So in, in, in the test that you're actually using in, the, in uh, your product, mm -hmm. uh, do you see, I mean, do you see uh, one test fail randomly a day or is it one a week or is it more often? Uh, <sighs> just, I, like, it's usually not the test. Uh, do you remember the timeouts I was talking about? Yeah. That, that, that can happen um, because we are running it on circle virtual machines or is it containers? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> really, but it's run on circles so you don't have real... Uh, if, if, you, if you run it on your development machine it will usually pass, but there anything can happen. So I hope I answered. <laughs> What stage of the development process do you start writing tests? End-to-end -end tests, yeah. We, we, uh, that's really a good question. <sighs> because it changes the Yeah, uh, we didn't have end-to-end -end tests. Hey, can you just repeat the question for the people? Oh, uh, I'm that? sorry. So, uh, thank you. The question was, in what stage do you uh, do you start writing end-to-end -end tests when you already have an application maybe or something. So um, from our Samantha's example, we, we didn't have end-to-end -end tests before. We didn't start with them and at the beginning, but um, when we started building the demo, we, we, we understood how important it is to be, uh, to be available. So it was, it was really something we had to do. We were forced to do it and it was really easier for us because the demo was already faking some parts of the application uh, uh, which we didn't have to do it ourselves. But um, I'd say it would be really easier if it started at the beginning but when, when you're in a hurry <laughs> building an application that's, that's probably uh, too much. Uh, so Swizzets on the stream asks if the tests are reliable enough to be actually useful. Oh, they were really useful for us. So there were some there were some pushes in our development code. Um, sorry, in our master branch uh, that wanted to be published and uh, uh, the test started failing repeatedly and uh, we checked how it looks like in demo because okay demo is something we should but we really don't check every time we we change and add something on the front end uh, and 
this was the only reliable way to tell us that something is breaking. And yeah, it told us a couple of times. It, a couple of times it could broke our sales pitches and uh, that's basically losing money. Awesome, thanks. Oh, uh, and one more thing. Uh, how much, how many mm -hmm. percentage of your code base is test versus actual code? Good question. Uh, so we mean test coverage. No, no, no. I, I, I'm just asking, like, do you have uh, 20,000 lines of tests and 20,000 lines of actual code, or...? Uh, no, 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 a lot less. But uh, we try to test, we did actually test every feature that's in the demo. So, yeah, okay. it's, our end-to-end -end tests are not covering the whole application, but the, the part that's seen in the demo and the part that our users that are already using it, okay. So just to make some things clear, we have internal users and external users. So the part that external users are using is almost all covered. But th those are not unit tests. I think you ask the question, those kind of questions with unit tests, where you need to test different units and you want to be sure you tested all of the units. But here you just want to test different actions that the user can make and then the response. So yeah, it's quite similar, but I, I think it's a bit different. How do you fake browse with continuous integration? I mean, developers have Chrome on their machines, but how do you do it on the continuous integration servers? Uh, they have it also installed. Yeah. You can also, on Circle CI, you can connect with Avinas and uh, inspect on the same way we do it here. So they also have it installed in the backend. If you don't, if you don't want to do that, you can use some uh, frameworks, uh, as I showed before. Um, there is like a small framework we can use on Travis. Huh, okay, thank you. Um, and also, yeah, I think those things are covered with uh, test swarm and everything, so it has all the drivers, but basically you always want to test in a real browser. You don't want to use a um, uh, fake environment. Then you can just use PhantomJS, right? Oh, I think uh, that was okay. <laughs> Thank you very much.